this is Tony from Chi Town Constrictors, and welcome back. In today's episode, I want to discuss VPIT positive with you guys. VPIT positive refers to a specific strain of T positive in boa constrictors that can get a little bit confusing. I get asked all the time, what is VPIT positive? What does it mean? Uh, I've heard the name VPI, I've heard the name T positive. Are they the same thing? Today, I'm going to try and tackle all of those questions for you guys, okay? In order to explain this, I need to break it down into two parts. T positive. What is T positive? T positive stands for Tarosinase positive. Tarosinase is one of many elements that come together that form melanin. Melanin is what gives our skin dark pigment. Same thing in animals. Blacks, grays, browns. Any animal, human included, that has dark uh, skin pigment like that is because of melanin. So what happens if you have an animal that doesn't have any melanin? Then you have an albino, very simple. It's white, pink, red, it's all of the colors that are not dark, which is usually just white and pink is the standard with pink or red eyes. All right. So you have an albino that has no melanin, and then you have a normal form of, we're going to use boa constrictors because that's what we're talking about today, a normal boa constrictor that has all the melanin in the world. Where does T-positive fall into this? Like I said, T-positive is only one of several elements that make up melanin, so it doesn't have them all. However, it does have some of the elements, which is why it's not an albino either. So T-positive is an incomplete albino and is directly in the middle. It is drastically reduced from the normal because it's much lighter in an albino sense, but there is still some black pigment there. There's still some dark colors, which is why it's not a complete albino. I'm going to show you guys some videos in just a minute that's going to help understand that a little bit better, okay? Um, next question I get. What does VPI mean? What is, where does that name come from? VPI stands for Vita Preciosa International. It's a company that was started by Dave and Tracy Barker, and they're the ones who are responsible uh, as the originators of the VPI T-positive gene. Basically, the way that it came about was back in 97, Tracy was made aware of a litter of boas that was born in captivity in a pet store local to her. And she ends up buying the entire litter of babies. There was some that were very normal looking, and there was a few that were much lighter looking. They weren't completely albino, but they were much lighter than the rest of them. Tracy ends up buying the entire litter, takes them home, raises them up, and ends up doing a couple of breedings with them. She takes a lighter baby and breeds it to one of the normal offspring, and breeds them together, and produces both normals and more lighter ones. Then she does another pairing where she breeds two normal looking ones together. And once again, she produces both normals and lighter ones. So we now know that this is a genetically pass onable trait and based on several pairings that she did, she was able to pinpoint it as a simple recessive mutation. Now I want to point out, if someone says T positive, there are different strains of T positive out there that are not compatible with each other. There's VPI T positive refers to the Colombian strain of T positive, pure Colombian blooded that was started by VPI. There are other strains out there that are not the same. There's Central American T positives, there's Nicaraguans, there's Panamanian T positives, there's Hog Islands. There's a lot of different strains of T positive. So if you hear someone say T positive, it does not automatically mean the VPI strain. The VPI strain specifically refers to exactly that, the VPI strain, which is pure Colombian blooded, okay? So, without further ado, I want to take you guys and show you guys some of what can be done with it and explain a little bit more about what makes a T-positive a T-positive. So, what makes a T-positive a T-positive? Well, here we have two very different looking boas. On the right, we have a normal wild type boa. You can see it's very dark. It's got lots of browns, grays, and blacks. That's because of the melanin that it has. That's your normal boa constrictor. On the left, that is obviously much lighter. That is a VPI T positive albino. That is the base gene that I work with. You can tell by looking at it, it is obviously much lighter than the one next to it. That's because it is an albino. However, if we take a closer look to it, we can see that there is still some black pigment there. That's what I was talking about when I said VPI T positive is an incomplete albino. It's because it does have the presence of tyrosinase. You can see that there is still some black in here in the tail that surrounds the red. There's some black speckling along the body. So there is still a little bit of black pigment there, which is why it's not a normal albino, which would lack that completely. Um, that's what makes a T-positive albino an incomplete albino. 
What happens if we take a T positive and we breed it into another color mutation, such as hypomelanism, otherwise known as hypo for short? Well, when we do that, this is what we get. This is a T positive hypo, also known as a VPI T positive sunglow, also known as a T glow. There's a lot of different names. I'm sure I'm forgetting a few here. I apologize. Um, basically, this is a T positive hypo, and it's really cool to see what the hypo does in this combination because it basically acts as a color intensifier. We just saw what the standard T positive looked like. It was pretty albino looking with whites and a little bit of pink with still some black. This one completely changes in color. The hypo acts as a color intensifier and turns all of those whites and pinks and reds into an orange. Here we have two boas that are very close to being the same thing, but you'll notice there's a huge difference between the two. On the left, we have a VPIT positive, but it also has the IMG trait. IMG stands for increased melanin gene. As we've already established, melanin stands for dark pigment. Well, what it does, as a baby, this boa will come out looking very normal looking, just like any other boa. But as they grow, the melanin increases more and more, and the bigger and older it gets, the darker it gets. By the time an IMG is an adult, it is usually jet black or very close to it with very, very little white or red left in it. So the one on the left is a VPIT positive IMG. The one on the right is also a VPIT positive IMG, but it also has the hypogene. So the technical term for it would be VPI IMG Sunglow. This is a VPIT positive Sunglow Jungle. So it has T positive, it has hypo, and it also has the jungle gene. Jungle is a pattern mutation, which is why the pattern on this one looks so cool. There's a lot of striping here in the tail, stripes along the body. Some of these saddles along the body lose the shape and become more of a figure eight. And it also breaks up the spear in the head just a little bit. Um, jungle is also known to mess with the colors quite a bit, where it will bring out a lot of lighter shades, um, makes a more of a creamy banana color. These two are the exact same thing. They are both VPI T positive Sunglow Jungles, but you'll notice there's a huge difference between these two. That's because the brother on the right also has the IMG gene. The IMG, uh, as we've already established, does have a lot of black in it, um, and as it grows, it will have more and more black come in. It's really one of the more rewarding animals to watch transition. If you look closely, you can see a lot of black coming in on the sides. And what's cool about this combination is the majority of the black will only come in on the sides. The top will get a little bit of speckling. You can see some of it already. Um, but you can see a very distinct line of where that black stops when it creeps up the sides. So as this becomes an adult, the black is going to be mostly on the sides. The sides will go pretty much jet black. And the top is going to stay very close to what it looks like now. There's another gene in boa constrictors called anerythistic. We call it anery for short. Well, anery does the exact opposite of an albino. Albino, as we already know, gets rid of the melanin. It gets rid of dark pigment. Anery does the exact opposite. Anery leaves the dark pigment and only gets rid of the light colors, the whites and reds typically, specifically more the reds. So if we take an anery, and we breed it to a T positive, or any form of albino for that matter, we now have two color mutations that are trying to do the exact opposite of each other, that are essentially getting rid of all the colors. So when we do that, this is what we come up with. This is called a VPI T positive snow. In essence, it's a T positive anery. This is a VPI T positive anery hypo, otherwise known as a VPI T positive moon glow, VPI Snow Glow. There's a lot of different names that nobody really seems to agree on, but I've just always called it a VPI Moon Glow. So you can see the clear hypo resemblance here. It's got the hypo saddles, which are much more reduced and almost bow tie like. And you will also notice that here in the tail, it lacks a lot of the blacks that would be surrounding the saddle. All right, guys, I hope I've answered all your questions about VPIT positive, what it is, and how it works. As you can see, they get big and they get beautiful, which is why it's my favorite gene to work with in boa constrictors anymore. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments field. Send me a personal message on Facebook if you want to. Tony Antonucci at Chi Town Constrictors. I'll try to answer it as best I can for you, or maybe I'll make a video about it in the future. I look forward to the next episode, guys. We'll see you then.